present. Uh, the first paper is uh, remotely. Uh, the next uh, uh, free paper is uh, in the person and one the paper is in the post session. Uh, post session. Uh, uh, the first uh, paper is Rod one better. Hey. Hi. You can we start to present uh, about five to ten minutes uh, your paper. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you here at my presentation of paper called Implementation of this Digital Shadows Concept in the Field of Industrial Automation. My name is Radovan Peter and I will guide you, guide you through my presentation. So, in the field of industrial automation, there has been a gradual increase in the interest in adoption of digital shadow and digital twin solutions. These advanced approaches play a crucial role in creating a virtual representation of physical systems, enabling enhanced monitoring and control capabilities. The integration of digital shadow solution has become an integral part of the industry 4.0 and revolutionizing industrial processes. So, the objective was to focus on creating a digital shadow for a physical robotic cell. This implementation passes through various phases, including analysis of the communication problems, exploration of possible methods of implementation, and overview of connecting the virtual environment with the physical robotic cell. And finally, the implementation and testing of the proposed digital shadow solutions. So, one of the key challenges in the implementing of the digital shadow concept revolves around real-time processing and analysis of data from an industrial camera. The, pro the camera and the PLC are connected on the same network, but there is a significant problem with the data flow between the PLC and Robot Studio. Additionally, there are connectivity, connectivity limitations within the Robot Studio itself necessitating the use of external applications, plugins, or special li libraries for effective communication. So, we come with the three possible methods of implementation. First method, method A, is use of the OPC server directly at the PLC. Method B is a communication uses SNAP7 DIG libraries. And method C is open source servers and communication between data access and unified architecture. So, first method is the OPC, serv OPC servers directly at the PLC. This method requires PLC software upgrade to a, to a higher version 4.0. Currently, we have version 4.1. Only one PL OPC UA server and, ro this and Robot Studio add-on can directly read data from the PLC. Exclusion of this method due to the uh, meeting, not meeting feasibility parameters of cost. Detailed, um, detailed analysis of this solution was then not pursued further. Our second solution is SNAP 7 DIG libraries. And this solution communication variant based on the SNAP 7 libraries in Robot Studio. This implemented as, um, these libraries are implemented as a smart component and requires PLC IP address and memory variable address for an access. This data uh, read only if the PLC, are ch PLC changes them. And uh, this advantage of this solution is a low, low usage rate due to a sustainability for a bull type data. And longer resp response time for the air, air other data types. So our first Third solution is UPC DI UI communication. This solution writes data on the UPC server and adding by adding Siemens PC station to a profiled network, we can write this data on the OPC server. And ABB ERC5 OPC can only read process from data the, from data from OPC US server. This bridging required bridge between OPC U, DI and UI server. These are some, these have some advantages. Some of them are communication stability and data monitoring capability. On this picture, you can see data transmission from camera to the robot studio. 
That means camera catch the uh, camera collects the data and then sends them to a PLC for further processing. After the conversion by OPC uh, through an OPC expert, their uh, these data are sent directly to the robot studio via ABB ERC5 OPC US server. The system implementation in Robot Studio consists of two main parts, rapid programs for industrial robots and simulation behavioral logic. To ensure error-free functionality, the system includes a function that writes zero values to output for incorrectly evaluated data. The robotic cell waits for a significant from the conveyor belt sensor before initiating actions, and the robot's contact position is determined based of angle it is part. The testing phase aims to verify the correctness of part generation and removal by a robot within the simulation environment. During testing, components right were rotated approximately by 45 degrees to simulate real world scenarios. Initial testing focused on camera capture and component generation, followed by testing and the removal of parts A and B at the different positions to assess the effectiveness of the implemented solution. On these pictures, you can see two test projections. On the left side is projection of a component and on the right side projection of the B component. The smaller image is what the camera sees. The implementation of digital shadow concept in the existing robotic cell address the current challenges encountered in industrial automation through feasibility analysis of various solutions and comprehensive approach has been de developed. This proposed solution leverages existing equipment and eliminating the need for additional investments or expansions. Testing confirms the current, current uh, correct functionality of the virtual environment in the relation to a physical robotic cell, highlighting the potential benefits and applications of digital shadow solutions in the industrial automation. I hope you all enjoyed the presentation. And if you have any question, questions, feel free to ask. Okay, thanks. Uh, any question? If you have no, We came to the next uh, paper. Question? No. Okay, thanks to present Thank you. your paper. Hello everybody, my name is Boris Kostov. I'm a PhD student and uh, today we will present you a comparison between two types of gripper, the one is the electromechanical gripper, the other one is pure pneumatical gripper. Uh, for the beginning, uh, here on this slide, I have put uh, with what we had made the testes. Uh, first, we had used uh, the robot RV2 kilos robot with six axes, uh, which is available in the Technical University of Sofia in the laboratory. Uh, also, this on the figure one is the electromechanical gripper. Here down, it's uh, the pneumatic uh, gripper. Uh, we decided to make uh, this comparison because uh, very often uh, in a real environment, when you must decide for a specific uh, part with what to manipulate this part, uh, you can choose between electrical and the pneumatic gripper, and the decision very often is very hard and it's based on very deep. Uh, let's say, the reading of the spreadsheets of the two types of the gripper. Uh, very briefly, the workflow of the gripper can be separated on two different uh, parts. The first part is uh, the movement of the gripper. This is the exactly the opening or closing, the grabbing or the putting the part. And the second one is the time for pausing. The time uh, for pausing is uh, different for all grippers. Uh, on the next slides, you will see what I have in me. Now, first, I want to introduce to you this is the electromechanical gripper. 
uh, the electromechanical gripper contains two parts. The first part is uh, the, the gripper on which uh, you can put uh, the fingers with which you grab the parts. The gripper which we use is a parallel two finger gripper. Uh, the fingers uh, we use are uh, pure 3D printed uh, fingers. Uh, the electromechanical grippers to operate needs a servo controller. The servo control of this specific model of the gripper is uh, this box on which is uh, the whole, uh, the whole servos for the grippers, the controlling of the servos for the grippers and uh, the controller of the gripper is uh, supposed to be attached on the upper arm of the robot, it's like the J4 axis, the axis between the wrist of the gripper and the elbow of the robot. Uh, the next one is uh, the pneumatic gripper. The pneumatic gripper we choose is uh, one of the best brands for grippers, it's uh, Gematic, it's Italian brand of uh, producing uh, all types of uh, vac uh, vacuum grippers, uh, pneumatic grippers and ETC. Uh, the gripper is uh, very simplified, it's again two, a parallel gripper with two, uh, two fingers. Uh, the gripper is uh, only attached to the uh, end of the arm of the robot to the J6 uh, axis uh, and it, uh, the air supply of the gripper is uh, from the bottom of the robot you put uh, the air pipes and uh, they go out on the J4 axis of the robot and uh, with that uh, you don't have external cables or external pipes around the robot and they don't uh, they, um, when you move uh, in uh, tiny spaces uh, there is no danger to uh, attach somewhere the pipes of the robots. Uh, here it's uh, the our experiment which we made. Uh, in briefly the experiment it's uh, because the grippers are with different height uh, and uh, to remove uh, this error of the different height of the grippers uh, I 3D printed one uh, table which is with uh, the height of the difference of the both uh, grippers. The both grippers are worked with uh, the same fingers, uh, the object which was picked and moved it's uh, the same, it's a plastic, uh, small plastic parts. Uh, this here which you see is an example of the code, the code of the robot uh, contains movements, contains operation for both types of the grippers because every type of uh, pneumatic gripper and uh, electromechanical gripper have uh, their specifics in uh, operating, they're not uh, the same. The biggest difference is that uh, if you want to work with electromechanical gripper, because uh, this electromechanical gripper is uh, moved by servo motors, you must find where is the zero position of every servo motor which is uh, controlling the electromechanical gripper. Uh, for the pneumatic gripper, you don't have uh, this type of controlling, you only have open, open, open and closed uh, state. Mm, the uh, other biggest difference is that in the electromechanical gripper you can control uh, the speed uh, and the force with which you open and close the fingers, the force with which you grab the part. Uh, and for the pneumatic gripper you don't have this control, you only have, as I said, two states, open and close. You can only control the states of uh, force as uh, reducing the uh, air supply of the gripper. Uh, the most important in our code are were not uh, the movements, were the timers. Uh, we put uh, timers on uh, very important places, let's say, in the code, and we measured uh, a couple of um, parameters. Uh, here on the bottom of the tables, uh, you can see we measured uh, the moving of the robots from point A to point B. As you see, there is almost no difference in the moving of the movement. Point uh, the other. Uh, things we measured, it's uh, first the finding of uh, origin. As you can see, the finding of origin of the electromechanical gripper it's around 4000 milliseconds for the pneumatic, as I said, you don't have. Uh, for opening and closing, uh, the data, see, uh, you can see that uh, the opening and the closing of uh, the electromechanical gripper is more, is more than three times uh, slower than the pneumatic uh, gripper. And uh, here you can have uh, one uh, parameter which is executing of command. Uh, what I mean by executing of command, uh, here you cannot see it because I didn't put it. It's like a command for open, command, command for close, uh, the type of the hand. Uh, as, you, as you can see, the 
electromechanical gripper is slightly faster. Uh, these uh, measurements are taken in uh, many, many, many cycles uh, and uh, they are the mean value of uh, the measurements. Uh, and uh, as a conclusion, all, uh, both of the grippers uh, have uh, different uh, cycle times, as you saw in the table. But uh, the cycle time of the, uh, some of the grippers cannot be the only reason to choose the other one. Uh, for one real uh, process, for one real manipulation of uh, part in the industrial environment, uh, very, very, very smart, uh, you must choose which one to use and uh, mostly depends on the type you manip uh, of the type of the uh, part you manipulate of the material material from which is made uh, the part because it's uh, if it's very soft or very breakable you you won't use pneumatic gripper you will use most probably pneumatic ones. Uh, any questions? Thanks. <laughs> Question. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Heiko Tsmelov. Uh, I'm a PhD student in the uh, Faculty of Automation at the Technical University of Sofia. Uh, I'm going to present you a report on a proof of concept I did about simulating a, uh, a manipulator or robot's movement using a game engine. Uh, but first, uh, let's start with uh, go back a little bit uh, how I, to how I came up with this uh, uh, idea. Uh, one of my course uh, projects was uh, I was given a truck, uh, a robot with a pixie camera and that is controlled by a PID controller and uh, the task was to uh, using a, a genetic algorithm to uh, find uh, the uh, coefficients of uh, the, uh, the controller. Um, as you may know uh, this will be really tedious if I used uh, an actual uh, a, a natural robot, so I did a simulation of the whole project uh, process and uh, as you just saw, this was the, the initial iterations uh, it got better uh, but yeah, it's a little shaky and at some point uh, it actually made uh, a whole circle uh, around track and uh, the best part was that I was there and watching uh, the proce progress that uh, the algorithm made uh, and uh, I learned two things first, evolution actually works uh, <laughs> things can get better uh, and uh, the second thing was uh, that idea of uh, creating a generic framework where I can uh, not only I, but anyone can just model their robot uh, or situation and environment and uh, use some algorithm that they implement uh, with this framework to uh, teach the, the robot to do their task that they, they actually want. Um, well, uh, this framework should uh, be able to create and uh, edit your models, uh, visualize them obviously because that's the main idea to see how your uh, robot works, how your algorithm uh, moves your robot, uh, movement obviously, uh, otherwise it's just a, it's just a picture, uh, simulate the uh, environment and uh, interaction, so if your robot obviously shouldn't be able to just try, uh, go through itself or hit, if there are walls for example, should, uh, there should be hit detection. Uh, visualization is not that hard. Uh, I studied uh, computer graphics, I can create rectangles, move them around. Uh, but then simulation part is a little bit harder because you need um, some uh, more complex uh, uh, algorithm, especially for heat detection. Uh, but uh, thankfully I realized that that's just a physics engine. And uh, uh, who uses physics engine the most? other than scientists, obviously, game developers. So, uh, incidentally, game uh, engines also uh, do really well with uh, uh, visualization. Uh, 
uh, game developers really need accurate uh, simulation of environment because the more realistic a game is, the better it is, uh, the better it sells. Uh, so that was uh, how uh, the idea came to me. Uh, to create the proof of concept, uh, I thought that it should be create a prototype, uh, it should be easily modifiable. It, uh, so Python is the perfect language for you know, creating uh, prototypes uh, iteratively and improving them. But uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Pygame is, is the most uh, and probably the only uh, game engine that is written in Python. Uh, and it doesn't implement actually a physics engine. So uh, I had to also use a, a physics engine. I decided to use Box2D. Uh, they are usually used together. Uh, so there is a lot of documentation on how to do that. And uh, it, it actually worked. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't work the best, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'll put more information. The black uh, link is actually uh, the ground or the base of the robot, the grey ones are the different links that they are movable, the black one is not movable, uh, the uh, teal one is actually the selected one to be able to show. Uh, you can see different information about, the, for example, uh, the coordinates, the size, the angle, uh, all of these are, um, uh, are measured according to the global um, coordinate system. That's important because we'll see later about the, uh, the joints and uh, the uh, purple uh, circle is actually the represents the end effector uh, of the robot uh, here is how it works uh, I'm creating the links uh, I can also the I don't can but but here you can see uh, the global, uh, this is the properties of the joint, the global uh, location of the joint is not really important. Uh, the only thing important is uh, the local for the uh, links uh, coordinates, uh, because that's where the axis of rotation will be for them. Uh, you can also see the limits, uh, that limits the angle that uh, the uh, joint can be rotated to uh, and uh, this move to is just uh, uh, just for the demonstration to uh, show that uh, how they are moving uh, for the movement uh, this is the target uh, um, angle of the joint you can see that it actually didn't uh, uh, is not that accurate uh, but uh, we'll get to that a little bit later the movement actually is done using, it's specific for the, this uh, physics engine. Uh, Box2D has uh, uh, sort of a motors in their joints. Uh, so you can just say, uh, uh, start running with the, that speed and uh, the motor will continuously, if there are no limits, it will continuously uh, rotate the, uh, the links. Um, but because I'm using the limits to stop it, uh, to stop the movement, uh, it basically we stop the motor, um, approximately the correct angle. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I was going to say. Uh, so, on testing, ah, usually uh, you can actually implement this with any physics engine, yeah, but usually you do uh, just say uh, apply that torque to this link, so uh, using box, uh, box to this is not uh, the only way to do this, but uh, they have this uh, little convenience that uh, you can just use their implementation for the motors. Um, on the testing it's uh, pretty simple, uh, we want to test the accuracy of the, the rotation, um, we use every 8th graders favorite formula, the cosine uh, theorem. Uh, we have this uh, simple, uh, this triangle, ABC. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, this, the locations of each uh, point is given by the, uh, by the engine. 
and we can calculate the, the angle S using this formula. And the, the distances, obviously, we can use Pythagorean theorem to, to find. Uh, so I have done two types of calculations, two comparisons. Uh, I want to compare the calculated version, a calculated angle, versus the angle that engine gives me. So uh, here you can see that the, the two of the, the both of the lines are exactly the same. Uh, uh, also for the testing, uh, I have uh, randomly selected 1,000 angles between minus 90 degree and 90 degrees, and uh, uh, said to, to the uh, model to go to these uh, angles. Uh, here they are sorted, but usually they are not, they are random. Uh, so I have sorted them to, and also, I have also got, gotten the uh, absolute value, uh, values of each angle to have this nice uh, line. It just makes it easier to, uh, to visualize. Uh, and as you can see, the engine actually does uh, calculate its angle, the angle of the joint correctly. Uh, but for some reason there are additional errors, uh, as you can see here. Um, the blue line is the expected angle, so the angle that I've given to the model to go to, and uh, the green line is the, uh, the angle that, that is actually achieved. Um, as you can see, there are some a lot actually uh, of error uh, in the in the beginning or. To the uh, for angles that are close to the to zero, uh, so that's between uh, minus five and five degrees. Uh, the angle the error is actually quite big, and uh, you can see it's sometimes uh, exactly the angle, sometimes it's just zero. Uh, so later, uh, I just shrank the uh, the limits manually. Usually they are so. Even, let's say you are going from zero to 50 degrees, I just said the limit, okay, the lower limit is zero, the upper limit is 50 degrees, and just go upwards. And it starts rotating until it gets to 50 degrees. Uh, so I, when I shrink the, uh, this, uh, when I shrink the limits by two degrees, it actually gets quite close to the uh, expected, uh, um, to the expected angles. Uh, but yes, there are still uh, some errors because it's just moving the uh, the uh, uh, the angles, just translation of the of the graph. Uh, and uh, here is a video of a future uh, model that uh, a future uh, work that I'm working on. Um, I have trained a neural network that. Uh, tries to find uh, the angles for each of the uh, joints and when you click it moves the uh, the robot yeah. and again I just got the, the, the same uh, framework that I created for this paper and added this uh, uh, training of the uh, neural network so just create your model and uh, add the additional algorithm that you want to test and test. That's, that's the whole idea. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Question? I have yes. Question: In fact, a few. I didn't get exactly from uh, your presentation. What is the purpose of the lower and upper limit? Uh, Can you show the slide with the uh, with the angle, with the setting up the angle and the limits? Uh, okay. So the the purpose of the angles, uh, the the limit is actually to stop the movement. I don't know when. Yes, but can you show? Yeah, because uh, there was something. How can I start it? It's, it's a video. Can I just click here? Yeah. Oh, okay. 
So the angle is your target. Yeah, the, here is the target. Move angle. to and and the fir and angle. What is angle zero? This is, this is the current angle. Okay, but is it measured or it's set? It is measured. Okay. This is the, all of these are the measured. Uh, uh, I mean that if those two joints were like like this, it wouldn't be zero, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it, it okay. Is, it is the current uh, position between the two. Okay, and then and lower and upper. Uh, the lower limit is uh, how much. Uh, in this case, how much it can go in this sense. Okay, so we the did... The angle, and uh, for 180, it can go to here. And what is the difference between upper limit and it's move the, two? Uh, move two is uh, the, the, uh, the position that I want to the, uh, the rotation to be. So it means that you cannot move it more than the upper limit? Yes, you, can, you can't move it more than the upper limit. Okay. That, that's the limit. They, they limit the position that uh, okay. uh, the, the uh, joint can be in. Well, my recommendation would be like to put some units there because I don't know if this is degrees or what it is. Yeah, it's, it's degrees. And uh, then, wh why did you say, when you were talking about the error, mm -hmm. there was an error. But why? How did you estimate that it was? You you used something like it, the error was too high or something. How did you estimate that? For me, it's it's a normal uh, error. It's not something. It's uh, the it's two degrees. There are some there is still some error here. If you yes, miss the correction correct. after the correction, well, for me it's too high. Two degrees. It's, it's all yeah, but do you have a referee point like how much should it be like? Are there limits for the error, zero. or it's just your <laughs> it, impression? It's a simulation, okay. so it, it should work perfectly. No, uh, nothing is perfect. Well. Don't, don't express something to work perfectly. <laughs> I want to be to the dot. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. The other question. If you know, I will be. Your certificate, your participation in the conference. Hello, uh, this is uh, servo drive control system. Uh, servo drive is uh, electric drive uh, for automatic control the uh, position, uh, speed, uh, moment, uh, uh, which is uh, the Uh, uh, which uh, use the uh, uh, to our uh, laboratory uh, the requirements uh, to the our servo system uh, which we present uh, it will be any requirements the first is the system uh, will be designed for education purpose for uh, students uh, which uh, I uh, have to use and it, 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 it must be able to uh, combine uh, compactness, uh, easy programming and possibility to adjust the, the loops. The loops uh, is from current, uh, from position and from the speed. Uh, the second is uh, must be able to perform controller uh, and several parameter uh, settings on all axes. Uh, that connected to the interface uh, in line uh, and third is the system must be programmed from different workstations uh, from um, many computers uh, uh, which uh, uh, be connected to the uh, network uh, 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 it has to requirement to should be fine tuning uh, parameter and features and uh, uh, the system should be have to uh, auto tuning in the real time uh, for automatically adjustable uh, the parameters. Uh, this is the box stem uh, for our control system. Uh, we have uh, uh, any elements. Uh, the first is the graphical uh, interface. Uh, 
programming logic control, servo drive, uh, servo amplifier, servo motor with uh, encoder, router and power uh, supply. In the lab uh, they have to uh, uh, 13 uh, computers uh, that need to be to able to connect to the drive uh, and when the student uh, is ready to be all the uh, program in the uh, real drive system of motor control. This is the our uh, system. Uh, uh, this is uh, a menu screen in the uh, display of uh, our we uh, ready mode to any program to be uh, reversed uh, 45 degree, 90 degree and so on. Uh, we have also the servo status, alarm lock and whole position. Uh, this is uh, the graphical uh, screen of uh, alarm uh, which we program. And this is the monitoring uh, function which is available from the uh, Mitsubishi programs. Uh, we have uh, to uh, many uh, parameters uh, that can be uh, adjustable. And this is a graphics uh, of uh, uh, online. Uh, in the servo drive that uh, we present the position uh, of the uh, rotor, uh, speed uh, and moment. Uh, and this is the mechanical characteristic uh, when uh, the servo is uh, turning, uh, turning uh, 45 degree. Uh, And uh, in the conclusion, uh, uh, in this paper is presents a modern servo drive control uh, system that uh, uh, be used in the laboratory of Technical University, which is implemented uh, to several courses in uh, uh, our uh, department. Uh, uh, the, this system is a control of single axis uh, servo controlled by POC and uh, uh, the Mitsubishi electric uh, position which uh, we uh, use uh, the drive uh, control, uh, the control system regarding position, feedback, uh, voice, uh, uh, voice uh, uh, position, uh, moment also and uh, the difference to real uh, and plant uh, is uh, uh, close to zero the error. Uh, the software package offer advanced uh, motor calibration uh, of uh, the other type of control select. Thank you for attention. Any question? If you have no question, I will be the next. Uh, uh, we, uh, we have uh, one paper in the uh, poster. If you have any question to the poster. I'm the presenter. Okay, thanks. And, uh, I can say some words about the poster. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Diana Bustolino and uh, I'm from uh, the Faculty of Electrical Engineering. Uh, in briefly, uh, I, I can say some words. Uh, the title of the paper is Methodology for Joint Work of Industrial Robots and Processing Centers. Uh, and uh, the aim of uh, this paper is to, uh, to uh, represent the main steps uh, for developing uh, robotic system uh, 
based on uh, industri industrial robot uh, manipulator, uh, conveyor belts, um, uh, carrying uh, polymer uh, parts for mechanical processing, and uh, that uh, uh, and the whole system. The whole system is driven uh, by a three-phase uh, motor with appropriate frequency converter, uh, three single-phase uh, uh, processing centers uh, that is uh, actually are um, universal motors for mechanical processing of uh, small parts. Uh, and uh, that uh, universal motors controlled by three frequency uh, converters. Uh, and uh, the main decision for that uh, absolutely electrical problem is uh, to use uh, appropriate uh, choke um, that uh, reduce um, excessive uh, voltage fluctuations uh, supplied to, uh, to the universal motors. And uh, here on the poster we uh, have presented uh, the whole um, hardware system descriptions and uh, the flow chart of uh, the control algorithm of the uh, static uh, robotic uh, system for uh, processing of uh, 3D polymer parts. Uh, some output uh, uh, voltage waveforms on the universal motor uh, without uh, uh, choke and uh, with, uh, uh, with choke at uh, no low regimes and the uh, power control units. And uh, this paper is connected uh, with the uh, project uh, supported by Bulgarian Scientific Fund. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Any questions? This is your certificate thank for you. participation. Thank you very much.